The RBS-15, Robot System 15, is Sweden's flagship long-range anti-ship and land-attack missile family, engineered from the outset for survivability in heavy electronic warfare, precise standoff attack, and seamless employment from ships, aircraft, and mobile coastal batteries. Developed by Saab Bofors Dynamics, later in close cooperation with Germany's deal defense on subsequent marks, the system represents a distinctly Scandinavian answer to the challenge of fighting in cluttered littoral environments like the Baltic Sea while retaining enough reach and robustness for blue water and overland missions. In its latest iteration, the MK.4 Gungnir, the family combines a published range beyond 300 km with enhanced seekers, hardened navigation, and modular launch options spanning air, sea, and land, which together make it one of the most complete Western sea skimming weapons in service. The program's origin is inseparable from Sweden's strategic geography and defense philosophy. In 1979, at the last moment, Stockholm declined to procure the U.S. harpoon and instead signed the first weapon contract for an indigenous missile that could be tailored to Swedish operational needs. That decision set the trajectory for a weapon optimized not only for open water but for the island-dotted, radar-confusing littorals that dominate the approaches to Sweden's coast. The first missiles were delivered to the Navy in June 1984, and the ship launched RBS-15 MK.1 followed into service shortly thereafter. The Swedish Navy simultaneously pushed for a coastal defense variant related to the air-launched RBS-15F concept. By 1985 the missile, designated RB-15 in Swedish service, was operational at sea, with the Swedish Air Force receiving its missiles a few years later. Production of the original MK.1 ran from 1985 to 1990, establishing a foundation of reliability, low-altitude sea skimming, and autonomous terminal homing that subsequent versions would expand in range, resilience, and flexibility. The RBS-15 owes part of its DNA to the earlier RB-04 missile, a Swedish Air Force stalwart. In evolving into RBS-15, designers retained the forward section, including the warhead, while replacing the aft section with new wings and swapping the original rocket motor for a compact turbojet. Trials aboard the missile fast attack craft HSWMS Pitya began in 1983, and by 1985 the system had achieved full operational status with the Navy. Ambitious ideas were even sketched for a submarine-launched version, Vastergotland-class submarines were, on paper, to receive four vertical launch tubes in an extended hull. That path was ultimately abandoned due to budget realities and the mismatch with how Swedish submarines actually operated, but it underscores a theme that has stayed with the program constant exploration of new basing modes to complicate an adversary's planning. From a physical and aerodynamic standpoint, RBS-15 is a compact, subsonic cruise missile built around a robust turbojet propulsion system, with deployable wings and, for surface launches, a solid propellant booster. Across marks, typical dimensions remain in the same class, roughly 4.35 meters in length, 0.50 meters in diameter, and about 1.4 meters in wingspan. Launch mass with booster is on the order of 820 kilograms, with in-flight mass about 660 kilograms. The missile cruises near Mach 0.9, approximately 600 knots or 1,110 kilometers per hour, allowing designers to maximize fuel fraction and range while ensuring controllable, sustained flight just meters above the sea surface. A 200 kg high-explosive blast and pre-fragmented warhead gives the weapon decisive destructive potential against medium surface combatants and critical shore infrastructure, while settings for impact or proximity detonation adapt effects to target type and engagement geometry. Guidance and survivability form the heart of the concept. Mid-course navigation is inertial, backed by GPS for long overwater or overland trajectories, and connected through flexible waypointing so operators can program complex routes. At sea-skimming altitudes, the curvature of the earth and coastal terrain work in the missile's favor, reducing enemy radar line of sight and compressing defenders' reaction times. In the endgame, an active radar seeker in the J-band takes over, filtering sea clutter and attempting to burn through jamming to lock and prosecute the intended target set. 
Later marks hardened this chain with improved electronic protection, better target discrimination, and, in the MK.4, anti-jam GPS to maintain accuracy even in contested spectrum conditions. The net effect is a weapon that remains, fire and forget, from the operator's point of view, yet highly programmable under the hood, with selectable approach bearings, pop-up or C-skimming terminal options, and behaviors designed to defeat decoys and evasive maneuvers. The early RBS-15 MK.1 introduced the core baseline, a turbojet-powered, C-skimming missile with a range quoted above 70 kilometers. It ran on the French Microturbo TR-60 engine delivering about 3.73 knots of thrust and established the launch architecture for ships, with the RBS-15F adapting the design for air launch. Entering service in 1989, the RBS-15F gave Swedish Air Force strike aircraft a standoff anti-ship punch suited to the archipelagos and narrow seas around Scandinavia. Even at this stage, the missile's flexibility was obvious, coastal batteries, ships, and aircraft could all be brought into a single, coherent kill web with overlapping reach and mutually supportive targeting. A desire for greater resilience and utility prompted work on the RBS-15 MK.2 as early as the 1980s, although the development contract was not awarded until 1994. The MK.2 preserved the general range of the MK.1, again quoted above 70 km, but introduced upgraded midcourse and terminal guidance, and reductions in the missile's radar and infrared signatures to complicate detection and tracking. Production began in 1998. Importantly, MK.2 embraced multi-platform launch from the start, with ship, aircraft, and land-based options in view, and Finland took a localized variant known as RBS-15SF, or MTO-85 in national service. Together, these changes marked the transition from a capable sea skimmer into a more survivable, more network-aware family that could flex across services without bespoke re-engineering. The RBS-15 MK.3, developed in the mid-1990s and co-produced by Saab and Deal Defense, represented the decisive leap in range, precision, and mission set. Through a larger fuel load and new fuel, the MK.3 range extended to some 200 kilometers, while integrated GPS sharpened midcourse accuracy and enabled reliable overland routing. A redesigned warhead from TDW brought increased penetration and insensitive munitions qualification, improving safety on ships and trucks without trading away lethality. Selectable priority targeting enhanced the system's flexibility in multi-ship engagements or cluttered coastal scenes. Notably, the MK.3 adopted a new microturbo TRI-60-5 engine delivering about 4.4 knots of thrust, and the launch hardware on ships shifted from boxy canisters to lower signature oval tubes. The German Navy selected the MK.3 for its Brunswick class, K-130, corvettes, underscoring the weapon's appeal for compact surface combatants that need a credible standoff strike capability. On land, Finnish industry integrated the missile onto Sisu truck launchers for mobile coastal defense, reflecting a broader European trend toward dispersible, road mobile anti-ship batteries. Production of the MK.3 started in 2004, and an air-launched extended-range offshoot, the RBS-15 FER, carried the concept back to fighter aircraft. The latest member of the family, the RBS-15 MK.4 Gungnir, named after Odin Spear, grew from a March 2017 Swedish order for a new-generation anti-ship missile valued at 3.2 billion Swedish kronor. Unveiled publicly the following year, MK.4 is again a Saab deal effort but, unlike the purely ship-launched MK.3, Gungnir is conceived from the ground up as a truly tri-domain solution. It can be fired from trucks as part of mobile coastal batteries, launched from ships including the stealthy Visby-class corvettes, or carried aloft by the latest JAS-39 Gripen-E fighters. Saab sites a range beyond 300 km, reduced missile weight, and a J-band active radar seeker of a new generation, paired with INS and anti-jam GPS navigation for better performance under electronic attack. 
The engagement envelope now spans a wider set of naval and land targets, and the design emphasizes all-weather operability and growth margin for future upgrades. Deliveries to Sweden are scheduled across the late 2010s into the mid-2020s, with full operational capability planned in that same mid-decade window, positioning the Swedish armed forces to field the coherent, modernized strike complex across services. A distinctive aspect of the RBS-15 portfolio is the diversity of formally recognized variants and national adaptations, each filling a specific niche while maintaining cross-compatibility in logistics and training. The foundational MK.1, as noted, ran on the TRA-60 turbojet, provided 70-plus km of reach, and seated both ship and air baselines, its air-launched sibling, the RBS-15F, entered service in 1989 and gave fast jets a compact, reliable standoff option. The MK.2 held range constant while improving guidance robustness and signatures, with the Finnish RBS 15SF, designated MTO 85 domestically, illustrating how the family could be tailored without fracturing. The MK.3, with its TRI 60 5 engine, 200 plus km reach, new TDW warhead, GPS, and selectable targeting, exists primarily as a ship-launched weapon, in Finnish service, both new MK.3S and upgraded MK.2S have been standardized to the SF-3 or MTO-85 M configuration. The RBS-15 FER extends MK.3 capabilities back to the air, while the MK.4 Gungnir consolidates the tri-domain vision under a single, modernized architecture featuring long-range, hardened navigation, and an advanced seeker. Technically, the missile's design choices are coherent with its employment philosophy. Subsonic speed at approximately Mach 0.9 is not a concession but an enabler, it maximizes range for a given fuel volume, reduces thermal signature, and simplifies sustained low-altitude control over long distances, especially vital when threading between islands or contouring along coastlines. The 200 kg warhead, coupled with impact or proximity fusing, gives operators options for hull breaching hits that detonate within a ship's vital spaces or for airburst-like effects that shred topside sensors, fire control systems, and communications arrays. Guidance that blends INS and GPS allows complex dogleg routes that avoid known air defense zones, civilian shipping lanes, or neutral coastlines. In the terminal phase, the active radar seeker's ability to discriminate targets amid sea clutter and decoys is decisive, a single well-placed hit from an RBS-15 can mission kill a corvette or frigate by damaging propulsion, power distribution, or the nerve centers of combat systems. Operators of the RBS-15 family reflect both regional concentration and global reach. Sweden fields the missile across its navy, air force, and coastal defense arm an integrated approach that aligns with the weapon's tridomain ethos. In Northern Europe, Finland has long employed RBS-15 at sea and on land, eventually upgrading part of its inventory to the SF-3-MTO-85M standard and deploying Sisu truck launchers that can disperse rapidly along the coastline. Germany equips its Brunswick-class corvettes with the MK.3, relying on its land attack mode and range to hold coastal infrastructure and ships at risk. Poland selected the MK.3 for its Orkin-class fast attack craft, gaining a meaningful standoff strike option in the confined Baltic battle space. Beyond Europe, Algeria's Miko A-200 frigates carry the weapon, demonstrating how the missile scales effectively onto larger platforms for area denial. Croatia's Kral class missile boats and coastal units have used RBS-15 for decades, maintaining capability through periodic overhauls and test firings. Thailand adds an air power dimension with the Royal Thai Air Force arming its Gripen fleet with RBS-15F derivatives, which gives a maritime strike reach well beyond national territorial waters. From an operational perspective, the RBS-15's virtues appear most clearly in coordinated, multi-axis attacks that exploit its waypointing and altitude control. Truck batteries can push inland, set up quietly on concealed coastal roads, and receive targeting data from off-board sensors, corvettes can launch from different bearings, aircraft can race in, ripple fire, 
and egress before opposing fighters or surface-to-air systems can respond. With carefully planned routes, missiles can arrive nearly simultaneously from divergent azimuths, saturating defenses, and confusing shipboard combat systems that struggle to classify and prioritize sea skimmers that appear late in their radar horizon. In land attack roles, the same logic applies, pre-planned doglegs avoid sensitive areas and civilian shipping corridors, while GPS-aided mid-course updates hold fixed infrastructure such as piers, fuel tanks, command nodes, and coastal air defense radars at risk. Sustainment, industrial alignment, and modernization pathways have been central to the system's longevity. Saab has continuously reinvested in seekers, navigation hardening, and system-level integration while ensuring older marks remain viable through upgrades and life extension. Collaboration with Deal Defense anchors production in European supply chains, smoothing spares and deepening the support base across multiple navies. On the user side, the commonality of canisters, interfaces, and mission planning tools reduces training burden and accelerates integration onto new platforms. The MK.4's modular system concept pushes this further by aligning air, sea, and land variants around shared components and software, which simplifies logistics and enables rapid capability increments as sensors and countermeasures evolve. Quantitatively, the family's key performance figures frame its role in modern naval warfare. With typical dimensions of 4.35m by 0.50m and a 1.4m wingspan, a launch mass of about 820 kg with booster, 660 kg in flight, a 200 kg high explosive blast and pre fragmented warhead, and sea skimming flight at roughly 0.9 Mach. The RBS 15 delivers a potent balance of reach and punch from compact launchers. Guidance couples inertial navigation and GPS in mid course with a terminal active radar seeker in the J band. Fusing is selectable for impact or proximity depending on target and desired effects. Range figures characterize the evolution, more than 70 km for MK.1 and MK.2, some 200 km for MK.3, and more than 300 km for MK.4 Gungnir. The propulsion lineage centers on microturbo TR-60 series turbojets, with thrust growth in later marks to support the increased fuel fraction and mission systems. These parameters map cleanly onto the doctrine of denial and punishment at sea, the missile is fast enough to compress timelines, long-ranged enough to keep launch platforms safe, and heavy-hitting enough to produce decisive damage with limited salvo sizes. Looking ahead, the RBS-15 story is one of continuity and adaptation. Continuity because the core attributes that made the MK.1 valuable in 1985, sea skimming survivability, autonomous homing, and multi-platform launch, still define modern anti-ship combat. Adaptation, because each mark has meaningfully extended the envelope, MK.2 hardened the missile and broadened its platform base, MK.3 added true land attack reach, GPS precision, and a safer, deadlier warhead. MK.4 Gungnir folds in anti-jam navigation, an advanced seeker, lighter mass, and fully tri-domain modularity. For nations balancing budgets, geography, and threats, that modernization pathway offers a credible, sustainable way to keep pace with evolving defenses. Whether employed from a stealth corvette weaving through archipelagos, a camouflage truck battery on a Baltic island, or a multi-role fighter pushing a salvo toward a contested coastline, the RBS-15 family gives commanders a proven, flexible tool for sea control and coastal strike, one that was born of Sweden's specific challenges but has found relevance far beyond them.